I'm not gonna lie. I cried for three weeks after Winter House. I came home and cried pretty much every day for three weeks. Hello? Whoa. Hello? Hello? I, I am not gonna be the first one to be on the welcome packet. We're in the middle of your Winter House stay, which has proven to be, I think, much more dramatic than you thought it might be when you got there. Oh my God. Also, like, it didn't really feel that way when I was there either. But yeah, for such a short stay, we sure did cause a lot of drama. <laughs> All of a sudden, I woke up with her hand on my dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Lindsay was single and her and Carl were not a thing, why would she tell Austin to keep it a secret? She said, please never tell anyone about this. Austin kind of said the awkward groundwork for your arrival. Do you have any recollection of this moment with him? No, of course not. I mean, listen, like I am such a sex positive person and have always been very forthcoming and open about my sexuality and who I've done what with, but it's just like not my style. Like, I don't even know what he's saying. I don't even think he believes what he's saying. He's like, oh yeah, no, we just went to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it winds up being like up there for me, at least it's up there with like the psychic said I hooked up with Luke, right? I'm like, really guys, like we're, we're doing this again, but I mean, whatever they, I guess they needed something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what happened but me and her. The day Craig asked me to be exclusive, that same night he was grabbing some girl's vagina, I would break up with him. So no one's going to tell Carl. It appears to me that, you know, he kind of wanted to impress the girls. I think he was in hot water again with Sierra, and it was just like, oh, well, you know, let me use this to try to get back in with Sierra and the girls. but. Listen, Austin, I've learned throughout, you know, the many years of knowing him that he thrives on drama. And I've been down this road one too many times with him to get mad anymore. Um, so I actually texted him the other day and I was like, are we going to get in another public year long fight or what? <laughs> <laughs> and what was his answer? He's like, I hope not. <laughs> I was like, dear God, Austin. <laughs> Can like you and I chat? You two do have a nice heart to heart in Vermont, which I guess was the first time you two had really spoken about the fallout of that Watch What Happens Live night. Looking back though, do you wish that had happened off camera or was doing it on camera the right move? Because Austin even says something like, I thought about picking up the phone and calling you a bunch of times, but I wanted to do it in person, which then to me was like, you wanted to do it on camera. <laughs> um, we, we truly, I don't believe we spoke at all, um, since, since October, right? And then we filmed in March. So, you know, that was a solid, what, five, five months, maybe. I think that space really was really good for both of us to enter into any sort of conversation with a clear mind, because honestly, up until that point, I probably would not have accepted a, an apology, right? So I also needed time and space away from everything to to you know be able to accept sorry it's Luke. <laughs> i'll tell him i'll call him back <laughs> can't talk right now yeah um though ask him about ashley darby i'd love to okay, know what's going I think on that's why he's calling me because i was like how was dc tell me everything i i probably will not tell you but <laughs> i'll get the scoop <laughs> Um, tied up in the Austin of it all is your housemates having a lot of opinions about you and Carl and a lot of questions about the timeline of your relationship. What's the timeline on the relationship? Literally the whole house timeline. Neither Carl nor I went around telling people that we were like dating. That was Maya who said word on the street is Lindsay and Carl are giving it a go. We were not the ones going around saying that. And we did have a conversation at the wedding. I'm kind of like developing feelings for you that are stronger than friendship. And like, I don't know if I'm alone in this or like what's going on. I mean, it's literally filmed and taped and on camera <laughs> for all of us to see. So, so yeah, so I mean, that was basically the conversation between Carl and I at the wedding. Um, but I was developing feelings for him and vice versa. And he, I don't know why, he was staying at a different hotel than everyone 
uh, that weekend. So he actually brought literally all of us back to the hotel, dropped us off and went back to his hotel um, that night. So that's why he wasn't around that night. I, I just need you to know that <clears throat> some of your actions can create unintentional consequences when you decide to give our story to the public. Yeah. And I was not involved at all. You also have a very intense conversation with Jason at the Winter House, where you unpack this story we all learned about from the last season of Summer House. What was it like to kind of revisit that conversation and I imagine open that wound again? Um, that was very difficult. I was not at all prepared for that conversation um just because he basically was telling me so when he says like you went public with it what he means is you told your story on summer house right but without breaking the fourth wall you know he, he said you went public with it the problem i have with that is i was very clear with jason that i would be sharing it and on top of that, what's even crazier is that he and I filmed an actual conversation in my apartment for Summer House season six. It wound up getting cut, didn't make it to the final edit. So for him to say, oh, you didn't tell me you're going public with it. I'm sitting there like, what on earth are you talking about? Either you have extreme amnesia because we actually did have this conversation and we then also filmed a conversation so for him to bring that up to then make me feel guilty about something that I didn't even do was very heart-wrenching for me I'm not gonna lie I cried for three weeks after Winter House I came home and cried pretty much every day for three weeks because in my mind like I have to live with this trauma you know and this 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 tragic thing that happened to me, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. And at the very end of the day, I was like, but at least it happened with this nice guy, right? At least it was this super nice guy that it happened with. And then after he kind of approached me and created this narrative that of something that I didn't do, just so he could get it off his chest because he forgot the multiple times that he was aware it was going to be public, it really changed my opinion of him, honestly. And it was a really sad time because I was like, I will never look at this guy the same after he he did that. Like, he didn't even approach me and say, hey, Lens, like, how are you doing? I haven't, you know, spoken to you in a, in a you know, a little while. Like, it's around the nine month time. We would have had a baby by now. Like. It was straight into, I have to get this off my chest. You went public, you didn't tell me. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? I did tell you, like, now you're making me feel bad about something I already feel bad about. And it just like, it changed my entire opinion of him. And it was sad. It was a sad time for me to have him do that. Yeah, I mean, that is a lot. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Um, all of it. I appreciate it. that. Yeah, I mean, it's, more common than you would think and you know i have i have waves of emotion about it but you know for the most part i just i try to use something you know tragic you know for a positive way and then i'm being pulled down into this like negativity and it just yeah it was upsetting well something that upset me oh, on a very no. different note was oh, no. jessica Claiming that you are old enough to be her mother or her aunt. I didn't think she was that cute, and everybody said, like, I told so much what, did you, what do you think I said the entire time? Everyone kept her. saying that, like, you look like her. I was like, that's not the nicest thing. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> what did you make of all of that when you saw it? I mean, I was like, dude, this girl said she wanted compliments. Um, I think it's quite a compliment to be compared to me. Not even just for, like, my physical appearance. I, I you know, have a pretty pretty fun personality. So um, yeah, she should have, I mean, she should have taken it as a compliment. I don't really get upset if somebody, you know, kind of slams or disses my looks or appearances. That doesn't upset me. Like I just, 
I'm like, oh, okay, cool, good one, you know? <laughs> like, I, I have a pretty solid self-confidence, um, so I just don't care. <laughs> it just never bothers me. I think something that does bother you is attacks on your character or commentary yeah. on your character, which also has come up this season in the press cycle of this season. Um, some notable Watch What Happens Live moments of Amanda saying you're the rudest to fans, Andy Cohen pleading the fifth when asked if you were mean to people at Watch What Happens Live. Do you have anything you want to say about that whole deal? I mean, I pretty much said everything I needed to say. Um, you know, I I answer things pretty quickly and then I move on. So I, yeah, like whatever. I you know, I I know who I am. My fans really rallied behind me on that because they're like oh my God, you are the only one who even answers my DMs. I'm like, exactly. Who do you still consider to be a close friend in this group? Because some of these things, I wouldn't consider that to be a friend anymore if they say that sort of thing about me. You know, each season you sort of have to reevaluate and figure out like, okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one in this category now and and stop, you know, thinking that there's an actual friendship here. But I also think that that's kind of been the case for like years now. Like nothing's really changed. Like this has been going on for a long time. Like this is not. Yeah, well on a happier note, what is the latest on wedding planning? Is 2023 the year for saying I do? Give me any updates you can. I hope so. Um, I hope so because I would like to like, you know, start having babies shortly after uh, we get married, but um, yeah, so so right now we hired a wedding planner, um, which was was step one, right? So we're looking at 2023, hopefully next fall. Um, and and that's all I know as of this week. I don't know who's officiating. I don't we and it was funny because I just had a conversation. I was like, Carl and I don't even we need to just get the venue down. Like yeah. that Take needs to be one enough. step at a time, yeah. one thing at a time. <laughs> what I'm is... hoping by next week. Uh, we'll have a venue and a date and a location. Okay. What That's is the plan? What is the over under of Danielle making it into the wedding party or on the guest list? I don't know. I mean, we're nothing's changed since the last time I talked to you. Um, so I, it's hard to tell. Well, I hope things go up from there because I don't like the two of you separated, <laughs> um, which I imagine you don't either. Uh, yeah. But. We got a whole season of a different show to watch to figure out what happened there and see. There. And so. by the way, that's right around the corner. So, you know, there's no chill in this world that we live in. <laughs> no, you guys, they have you working year round now, living your life, filming your life and talking about your life. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I have to go call Luke back and get the details. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell him hello for me. And if Ashley's on the phone, tell her hi to me from me too. Oh, I certainly will.